Freeride episode 13. And then I took an arrow to the knee. Who is this guy? Did I miss an end credit scene or something? Alright. I'm not crazy, right? We've never met this guy. Episode 13, aversion to one's own kind. My kind of people. He looks the part. Looks awesome. Oh, that... That hurts. Oh yeah, I instantly felt that deep in my bones. And who are you? Got it. Okay, I, I get it now. I get the. This is the introduction. This is the introduction. Definitely what Fern thinks. Oh, Fern's gonna love this guy. And by love, I mean hate. Or love. <laughs> really love deep down because that's Fern's true nature that she's been hiding. How is that possible? And all the travels you did with your crew? What's she holding out for? <laughs> Fern also just unmoved. Oh, she didn't notice. Oh, he, he lived after all. I mean, she didn't put him in the swamp or the mog or bog, whatever it's called. That's right. I mean, they're going to end up in the village or with this guy. But then again, this is the, the show where we spent eight years in a log cabin with an elf and barely got to know him at all, despite him being the only elf besides Freerin on the planet. All we learned about him was his name and his abs. Yeah, and we're back in the village. That's cute. <laughs> He's so calm. Right, that'd be a simple spell, right? Typically, antidote is one of the first things you learn. Good thing there's no breezes, or else her mana would be too depleted to carry him. Maybe that's just the, the buff, the warrior buff. Poison resistance. <laughs> Those passive stats. Those odds are actually terrifying. When it's you. Meld, you say. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I bet you it's that guy. Yeah, there it is. Good thing we saved him, huh? Yeah, that's a, that's a level one spell. Come on, that's a default spell. That's the kind of spell you learn or have from the beginning, but you don't want it. Antidote, like the least sexy move in all of RPGs. Right up there with scan. RPG makers, like, apparently just love to scan. I mean, if it's so ubiquitous in games. I mean, I guess there are probably people out there who love scanning. Leave a like on this video if you like to scan. <laughs> Fill up that bestiary. Oh, I guess it's not a level one spell after all. Oh. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. He would be one of the highest priests, not the highest. We got Hyder's blessing. Here it comes. <laughs> Here we go. I wonder if he ended up staying for his brother. Yeah, I might actually get a new party member. Mm, I don't know though. This is a tough one and maybe controversial. For him, and I'm guessing also for a lot of people or people I'm thinking about in my life, there's that thing of suppressing your own needs or desires or like grand dreams for your obligations. And that's not me at all, <laughs> but 
In its purest form, I, I respect it. This is a random memory that comes to mind, but I was at a campfire once and uh, I don't remember why, but somebody was talking about how he knew a guy who found out his kids were not his own biologically pretty early on in, in their childhood or when they were infants. And he decided that for the kid's sake, he would stick around and be, you know, be their father. And I don't remember the exact details, but I remember the, the idea that there were a lot of other circumstantial circumstances he made in that decision. And like my knee jerk reaction to that was like, ah, oh, that poor guy. But then the guy who was telling the story said that was a limited way to look at it where there really would be no higher thing for that guy to do like what else is he gonna do like live a live a life of freedom and adventure etc he could just as easily find a high calling in his duty and responsibility and that a, a quote-unquote normal life could be every bit as invigorating and fulfilling spiritually as, as like any anything else and that initially ruffled my feathers a little bit this is a very long time ago but it stuck with me and i've come to agree with him in the overall idea of it like yeah that's beautiful if and this is my point if that's really what it is in my experience the way i've witnessed it in my own personal life it's usually not only that in a pure form. It's a mix of that and using that as an excuse. It's a way to let oneself off of the hook of that grand fear of adventure. Some people in my life who are like not happy with their current standings, they did not pursue their dreams. And the reason they put forward for that is like, I have to stay around for my family but maybe it's me and maybe this is an arrogant or selfish way of thinking. I always feel like outside of really severe circumstances, your family would probably be okay. And they also may have their own more selfish motivations for not wanting you to leave or get out there into the world. Even if that selfishness is a not so selfish thing of, I just don't want you to be in a situation where harm will befall you. At which point, all you need to do is like go out there, do it and show them that you can do it well. And that will, if that is the only concern, that will alleviate all the, all the pressure. That was certainly the case for me. I'm fortunate that I think the people around me genuinely do really care about me. And so the people who had reservations about me leaving the US ultimately came around when they saw that I'm like having fun and flourishing. I say all that to say, again, it could be that he's sacrificing all this for his brother or something like that, but there's also probably something about him that could be addressed more directly, let's say. <laughs> that 20% poison thing is real and hit home. We don't really know the guy though. We need to see him like kill a dragon or something. But Fern is... Wait, yeah, what? Oh, bold. Oh, I would love to see Star Stark in a bar. Cool. Sit down. <laughs> Do it. It's him. It's not responsibility. You poor, poor soul. Was he naked? <laughs> He's naked. <laughs> Damn, man, he literally lost his shirt. Oh, he lost his shirt, too. Pervert. At least he let them keep the boxers. Bringing him would be fun, though. Never too late is what I want to believe and always tell myself. It's also one of those things where he's like, actually, he really loves smoking and drinking and gambling. But like, the story would be something like, not that I can do it, but stay here. Might as well smoke and drink and gamble, etc, etc. Right, she also rejected that invitation. For someone as, at least externally, cold and non empathetic as Freerun, she's actually really good and really smart and quick about finding common ground with people she meets. She actually has a pretty good empathetic reflex, I think. Right, and she had the whole like legacy thing that her teacher put on her shoulders. That's gotta be weighing on her. Yeah, Himmel's just a man. Himmel's like real heroic trait was perspective. <sighs> I think Freeman just went through a similar thought process as I did. Or not. <laughs> I was about to say it's all on him. He has to be the one to make the decision though. That was nice. You're pervert. Oh. The contempt. You showed abs and nipples. She, man, she's such a puritan. 
Well, I mean, hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's destiny here big time. I mean, this skill thing does make it extra worthwhile. Oh, they're putting on the recruitment expressions. Whining and dining. Again? How do you get through to him? I think he'll convince himself. I don't think you need to convince him. The obstacle here is, is not logistics, but fear. But I think there's a greater fear of living like this forever with the knowledge that you didn't. Maybe just leaving him alone for a bit would do the trick. Or creating a situation where he's useful. Getting that adventurous fire started. It's hard to explain, but this is really close to home to me. That's what the Tabakoni is already known. She has a serious blind soft spot for Hyder, which makes sense. What's wrong with that? I don't know if that's the case. Who's the pervert now, Fern? <laughs> Their mind immediately went there. I think his brother actually just likes miniatures. He's a collector. It's all for his dolls. He's gonna hate them to a certain extent because he hates himself and the reflections of his self-hatred. Hey, whatever gets you out of bed in the morning. How do you feel about a thousand? Ooh, Freerin, imagining Freerin trying to be seductive, rough. Kind of depraved spell she about to... Oh, the anticipation of this. <laughs> this is gonna be great. And by great, I mean terrible. I thought it was gonna be like a body enhancement spell or something to, you know, become one of those mature anime women. It's like watching a car crash. <laughs> Even the heart couldn't be bothered. Flam actually taught you that? How much time was put into that lesson? What? That's how it works if you like someone. Everything they do is attractive. And when you don't, nothing they do is attractive. In fact, it's repulsive. Really? Uh, they just love her. Likely. Could also be he's having a great time. I mean, when I came to Korea, I said one year. He's already regretting it and thinking that. Shut up! Lies. And the brother's here to, to say it's a lie. I knew this was coming. I knew it was going to be the family thing. I actually have heard this so many times in my real life. I've had this conversation, which is why I said it, it cuts close to home. And it stings, but like, there's nothing you can do. I guess that's part of why it stings. My father likes to say people are authors of their own misery. And of course, that's not the extent of it. You know, a lot of terrible things happen that are, you know, no design of one's own. And yet, a lot of things are. I hope they find another solution. I would like to know another solution, but in my experience, the farthest you can go is say your piece honestly and in good faith and then let it go sometimes things take time to sink in i mean i think the key thing is that he already knows he is hearing the words coming out of his own mouth and hating it nothing freerin can say would be as convincing as that exact self-hatred that is already brimming from within and if that's not enough then that's that <laughs> Maybe you can ask him. I don't know. This is the thing I hate of people making decisions for others without the discussion. Slap him. That's <laughs> not what I was thinking. I knew that
There you go. Your self-hatred made manifest in a slap from your brother. <clears throat> I have uh, decided to join you. Oh, that 100% was a love slap. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, you know, it's the intent behind the thing that really matters. You don't say... Also, this is anime. I don't remember them saying his age. But, like, he's old, which in anime means he's 21. So, like, shut the hell up. Or maybe he was a teenager when his friend left. So, 26? And that's how the four of them defeated the Demon King. That's cool. I mean, I think that's a good mental framework. You don't need to think it all the way through. Because it can be daunting. Just do a little bit, see how it feels. For that matter, he could actually only do a part way, find out it's not for him, and quit. But then at least that soothes his conscience a little bit. He knows it genuinely wasn't for him. And that will make his village existence so much better. But I doubt that's the way it's going to happen. And now we have the hider of the trip. He's gonna be the fun one. Didn't expect for this to be so relatable to me. I think in a lot of ways I'm the opposite of this. Like, I probably should be a little more concerned about stability and simplicity and responsibilities at home. It took me a while, but I've come to really respect the opposite side of the spectrum for where I am. Random aside, a long time ago I played the game Catherine, and the way that game works is there's a morality bar between chaos and order, which is kind of annoying because if you play the game with any kind of nuance or subtlety and don't go to either extreme, you get a terrible ending. But anyway, my good friend and roommate at the time watched me play it and we had a discussion about chaos and order, and I said something to the effect of like, give me chaos over order. And I was thinking today about how like, man, did I really embrace that concept like to a fault but i don't think one is better than the other i think like usual authenticity self-honesty defeating one's personal demons whatever those may be carving out the life one wants whatever form that takes in a very dedicated conscious reflective deliberate way there's obviously no one size fits all package for how to live life in the logistical sense i think there probably is in that sense where like you know deep down you know you know what you are and what you want and it's really hard to should your feelings in that way i should feel this way i should be this way and the pitfalls of that can be really pernicious you know because you, you'll always find reasons why you can't there are a million things to choose from at all times but i would wager a lot of the time a lot of that is probably fear not any real impossibility logistically a lot of things are possible. There's one cool thing I heard recently that I think is a good way to practically approach this dilemma or conceptually approach this dilemma. I think it was something like fear is a mile wide and an inch deep. So, you know, you imagine the obstacle in front of you as a body of water with unknown depth. You imagine that it'll drown you, but like, you don't know, it could be walkable. It's like Oregon Trail, you know, do you, do you ford the river or do you caulk the wagon and float in it? But you can probably wade in. You'll probably find that you can stand and, you know, you take it one step at a time and maybe you end up just walking across the whole thing, you know, or maybe you can and you figure out ways to deal with that or you turn back but like at least you know this guy's gonna feel terrible in some ways but so good in others like he's been hungry for this for so long i think once he gets a taste of it he never goes back